everyone, Archtaco here. Welcome to a game that I hold dear. You knew we could get to the halfway point. For months I've roamed these empty maps. Why write a sparrow of too much flab? Finally she's opening up the post. There'll be tons of cool new action. It'll be a blast. But dang am I so ready to go fast. Cause for the first time in this let's play, Eevee Tumbler is mine. For the first time in this let's play, moving around won't be a grind. Don't know if I'm heading the right way, but I'm in the Ishtar Zone. Cause for the first time in this let's play, our enemies are boned. I can't wait to run over them. <gasps> what if I run over all of them? Tonight, imagine me riding tall, the bane of all these petty thralls, the image of the Falthen's greatest foe. Ooh, I totally see them standing there, quaking of fear as I get air. I wanna strut some dance moves in their face. Ow. But then we blast them with no mercy and take off for the stars. Who knew I could do tricks and flips so far? For the first time in Destiny, there'll be MLG galore. For the first time in Destiny, Riding around is not a bore. And I know it is totally crazy to dream I'd Superman. But for the first time in this let's play, I finally can can. What have I done? What's wrong with me? That scooter was an alpha testing. For real, don't feel, you can't reveal. Make one wrong move and everyone will kill. But it's only for today. I'll have it every day. It's just the let's play. More than a let's play. Tell speaker I'm going to resign. For the first time in this let's play, I'm getting really what wrong. I'm dreaming of. A chance to grab some gnarly air. Right. A chance to live the dream. Right, don't fright, I'm out I of know there. it's not a huge deal, but it makes me so happy. Cause for the first time in the LP For the first time in the LP We're playing Destiny I don't like us getting dragged out here and not being able to get the lay of the land there used to be a guardian outpost nearby. Let's see what they have on this place. Hey everyone, Arshaka here. Welcome you back to Destiny. I apologize for the delay in the episodes, but I hope that little musical number at least kind of made up for it. Now, before we get into it, uh, it did interrupt that little opening sequence. So real quick, before we get in too deep, I'm going to go ahead and play that right now. Our new friend must have access to extraordinary methods to have reached out to us like that. The radio message she sent came from somewhere in the jungles of Venus. This colony was built by the Ishtar Collective. Records say they once studied ruins older than humanity itself. We thought this was all lost in the collapse. Ah, 
All right, and you're back. All right, so we are officially halfway through the story mode on Destiny. Super exciting stuff. We are on Venus. Oh man, Venus. Um, in terms of locations and in terms of kind of the, uh, oh, just the design of the area in general, really, really neat stuff. Super pretty too. Just being out in the jungle, among all these crazy ruins, all these rusted cars, kind of like Earth. It's pretty neat. So. Uh, our first, uh, biggest and definitely most important objective is getting our dang fangled sparrow back, our tumbler. We don't have ac access to it yet until we get to this beacon right here. All right, Dinklebot, do your thing. Please. We're linked. Sparrow's accessible. There's a lot here about some war machines called the Vex. Indestructible, relentless. Supremely intelligent, and they can teleport. Great. Guardians used to have sensors to track them. Let's get them back online. <laughs> okay, so before I even begin talking about the Vex, which are who we mama, they are a handful. I just want to say this episode by far, um, and you saw a little bit of his of Peter Dinklage kind of being a sassy kumquat. This episode by far has the best writing out of like the entire game oh my god some like legitimately I, at least i felt really funny stuff especially the first time i played through and wasn't expecting it oh my god i love this episode if nothing else i mean the story itself eh, a little bit bland you guys will see what i'm talking about but just the writing and the delivery of it i love it also come on there we go oh man we're using the tumbler oh man the back sensor should be up ahead and of course, I just ran to a spare. Ooh, yeah, okay. Bunch of uh, orbs. I am definitely gonna go ahead and dispatch all these people uh, using my super, because I might as well, you know? Who knows, maybe the person that uh, generated all those orbs will uh, will be able to benefit from the ones that I generated, even though it kind of looks like they just kind of um, went and ran off. So it's probably not what's you know gonna end up happening, but I can dream. I can dream, Harold. All right, so with that, second decal bot point, and here we go. These sensors are extensive. Okay, I should be able to track these machines. Let's head to those coordinates and find out what she wants us to see. Yeah, I mean, we don't have anything else better to do, but I just want to point out, like, man, like, I have... I have enough problems trying to get like a regular radio station to come on, like in my car. What kind of radio does she have that she can broadcast from a different planet to us? Uh, that is some supernatural poop if I ever saw it. Friggin' four-armed aliens? Eh, whatever. You know, maybe it's it's believable. Friggin' hive people chaining up giant Shrek-like guys and... Huge taverns that shoot laser beams out of the growths. Eh, probably pretty believable. Also, going chest right here. Uh, pretty dang important. But I will take Sandman. Getting a solid radio frequency from like a long distance, let alone from like another planet. Uh, no. I'm I'm putting my foot down. Not be not believable in the slightest. Christ on that. So. Detecting Vex. Like we're surrounded. I always love when that radar does that, but yeah, th this um, oof. The coordinates lead here. What is it? Let me get a closer look. That that tunnel definitely <laughs> didn't look natural. Also, uh, like, uh, what's up with this thing? Just kind of standing in the middle of this like rundown building thing. Kind of reminds me of like an archive or like. Almost like a library of sorts. Huh. Fascinating. A conflux of non baryonic streams going where? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's the Vex. Better find oh, some cover. So we are going to be in for quite the fun time. These are the Vex. Oh, out of all the uh, four enemy factions of the game. By far, I just I feel like these are definitely the most challenging. Um, for if nothing else, because they completely well, they really change up the way that you have to 
like think about the enemies and approach them, which I can respect, but also uh, definitely struggle with. Um, the key thing being, their weak points are not their heads. Every Vex, uh, minus a the specific unit that we're going to see uh, later in this mission, um, have like a glowing kind of like central processing unit on their bellies, and this is their weak point. Anywhere else is going to do normal damage, with the exception, as you just saw with that Vex that I shot down, um, if you try to go for the headshot, do too much damage to it and you'll blow their head off, which, uh, instead of hampering them, will just make them go like totally bonkers. Oh my god. One of the things you really want to try to avoid is blowing their head off. Because if you do it to too many of them at once, or if you're just low on health and do it to even one, they will rush you down. And, oh, he's so adorable. They, they're also kind of smart. They will crouch down to protect their weak points, which is something no other enemy faction does in the game, which I can definitely respect. It's really neat. And they just look adorable crouching down. But no, seriously. Um, Just the fact that they punish you for going for headshots it's crazy to me. I, I actually legitimately like it. Problem is, man, it, it's kind of like ingrained to do it. And when it happens, you will not be a happy camper. So we have uh, standard goblins. We have hobgoblins, which I'm fighting right here. These are the snipers for the Vex. And Hui Mama, they pack a punch. And they also, um, if you do any amount of damage, like you shoot them once, even with this pulse rifle I'm using, um, they will become invincible for a short amount of time and uh, generally just be a big old pain in the butt. Especially you get a bunch of them sniping you while you're trying to take care of all the hob or all the goblins. The hob goblins can become a major pain in the butt. So that leads us to the third enemies that you just saw me take down. Oh, one sec. Of course, I'm burping. Last but not least, we have these fools. These are Minotaurs, the bane of pretty much every Destiny player's existence. Um, without a doubt, Minotaurs, definitely some of the hardest enemies in the game for nothing else than they don't have weak points. Period. They, they don't have a weak point. They do a ton of damage to you. They will rush you down, although they do it in a kind of predictable pattern, which kind of helps a little bit. Um, but they will teleport all over the place. Um, they have just a crazy amount of HP. They are, they're always shielded. Um, oh, just a huge, huge pain in the butt. Um, if you can, I always try to uh, kill them. Just like I always try to save my heavy ammo specifically for the Minotaurs because trying to take them down with any other kind of weapon is just going to be a huge pain in the butt. And that's the thing. In general, I just find that the Vex enemies. Um, compared to a lot of the other enemies, uh, or at least a lot of the other enemy factions, definitely I think um, they bring a lot more variety in terms of like how you engage them in and the different weapon types that you have to deal with and juggle. Um, and for those reasons, makes the Vex very difficult. So, um, <laughs> oh my god, there's so many. We're playing this on hard mode, which again, uh, not only makes more enemies spawn in, so if you're playing this like on the normal difficulty, there were, you would not be like getting this swarmed by the enemies, um, and I believe that there's gonna be a couple more, like a couple extra waves compared to the, you know, normal mode if variants, if you will. So uh, that's definitely something I gotta deal with. Oh god, yeah, but they're gonna start spawning in these Vex majors, these Minotaur majors, no less, which are gonna have like at least double the HP, do so much more damage, and ugh, generally uh, they will just not be a good time to be had. Also, what was that even? Was that even words? Was that even words? I don't, I don't know. Um, thing with Minotaurs though too, if you deal, it, it's pretty much inevitable that they will uh, be frenzied. Unlike the uh, goblins and hobgoblins, where if you only hit their weak point, um, you can avoid like blowing their heads off. Minotaurs, once they reach a certain damage threshold, will always go frenzy, which is just never a good time. Because if there's one enemy in the game you don't want rushing you down. It's definitely Minotaurs. That kind of leads me though to uh, them being a slightly predictable. As I think you might have noticed by now, anytime they want to approach you, they will always teleport three times. Which when I was like first fighting them, would always like really just confuse me because you know, every time they teleport, obviously you can't hit them. So I would like constantly be missing with my rockets or my heavy machine gun ammo and uh, just, you know, generally get pretty frustrated by it. So. Uh, that is one thing though, as long as you count to, as long as you're capable of counting to three, um, 
uh, being able to plan for their teleporting usually shouldn't be a big deal. And if you have really good timing and you're able to hit them um, when they come like back in during those like three teleporting jumps, you can actually get a decent amount of damage to them before they'll start like attacking you again. So let's, oh god, they are like spawning in right on top of me. Christ almighty. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, I guess if I'm just going to totally overload you with like strategies and ways to deal with the vex that I've just learned over time. If there are a ton of hobgoblins, as you can see here, there's just, oh, they're firing at me just everywhere. Um, if you want to like avoid being pressured by them, you can just like periodically um, take like little pot chats at them. Because again, if even one shot connects with them, they will pause for a pretty good amount of time go into that like invincibility phase where they just don't do anything but crouch down with that like weird red shield thing. So that's I guess that's always a good way to just kind of take a little bit of the pressure off. Because whenever you fight the Vex, you're going to get swarmed by the goblins. You're going to get pressured by the hobgoblins. You're going to be blasted to oblivion by the, by the Minotaurs. So if you can at least take one of those factors off you, you know, at least the, it becomes a little bit more bearable. A little bit more Charles Barkley bearable. So, okay, Axis Minotaur. Oh my god, this is one rocket. Man, that would have like... That would have been a one shot for regular Minotaur, and that just like took off a shield, a little bit of his regular HP, and literally nothing else. Christ almighty. Okay, sir, if you could. God, if you're getting Bustard Rabbit jumping up in the brown, what does that mean? I, I, it means what he's doing, honestly, at this point. Just a pain in the keister. So, you know what? We're not gonna deal with him for now. I'm just gonna get over here. Ugh, I, I can't deal. Cannot deal. Should probably just get these guys out of the way before I tackle the Minotaurs. Ugh, god dang. I've, I've spent like this entire firefight pretty much in the red. If I was in Wall Street, I'd be just singing all the goats. Uh, obviously right now, it's probably not the most ideal situation. Christ. Ugh, and even now, like, I feel like I've defeated so many of them. And if you look at my radar, I'm, I'm still like surrounded by them. Oh my god. It, it just never ends. I mean, like, I've taken out so many, and they're just coming up the stairs, man. Oh, thank God for all those points and discipline. Give me them grenades. Oh. Remember, kids. <laughs> you're playing as a Warlock Sunsinger, and you're not spamming grenades. You are not doing something right. Oh, God. No, 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 no. I have a pixel. Oh, I have PPG's ferret. No, no, no. Please, please, please. Nothing against ferrets. Nothing against pixel, but I do not need that in my life. Oh, and he got his shield back. Come on, man. Come on. Axe's Minotaur? <laughs> More like... I... Axe... Minotaur question? And the answer is no. Eh. Hashtag... Uh, pff, witty commentary. Archtaco 20... Uh, uh, f f f 15. Yeah. I guess I'm in like March now. I should probably know what year it is. But I mean, I feel like this is applicable to pretty much everyone. But I mean, really, who actually gets the hang of like what year it is until at least like mid July? I mean, come on. I just wrote a check the other day for rent. I had to rewrite that check because I mistakenly wrote it 2014. You know? Ugh. All right. So I do think we're getting to the end. I swear to God, there's another wave after this. I will probably literally cry. It has been just clutch mode for all the days. Please let this be the last one. Please just let me finish this out with a bang. Not with a bang, but with a whisper. It was probably Charles Dickens. I think everything's Charles Dickens, really, when it comes down to it. Okay, two of them. Oh, my God. <laughs> Stranger danger. I need an adult. Oh, I need an adult. He is frenzied. Oh, come on, Melee. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, so clutch. So, oh, that's it. Oh, we did it. Okay. Oh my god, I'm sweating. Oh my god. What are these things? Are there any still intact that I can handle? Get ready for the best cutscene in the game, hands down. Please enjoy. Well fought. You're here. We haven't got much time. Who are you? Why have you been watching us? 
I don't even have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. I will. I will. I know. Will what? I wasn't talking to you, little light. I'm a ghost, actually. Many guardians fell. Strong ones. But you made it here. Yes, I'm listening. They are here. With me. Who's she talking to? I don't Understood. Care. She's a robot with boobs, which is completely necessary. You need my help, Guardian. Is that why you brought us here? They brought us here. The Vex. Evil so dark it despises other evil. You're not a Guardian. No. I was not forged in light. But I believe where our paths cross, ground could break. Have you heard of the Black Garden? We've heard the legend. The greatest threat to us all lies there. Where these machines are born. Find the Black Garden. Rip out its heart. Only then will your traveler begin to heal. Can you help us find it? My path's my own. I can't. If we're going to find the Black Garden, we need to see the Awoken. Ah, yes. The Awoken. Out there wavering between the light and the dark. A side should always be taken, little light. Even if it's the wrong side. Too late returning. How many? Hold position, kill the engines, and don't let them find you. So, how do we find the Awoken? They live all the way out at the edge of the darkness. The last place the light touches. Can't we just stay here with the murderous robots? No. Little light. Don't do that. Oh man. And we did it. So, as you guys saw there, first off, all oh, the way she like pushes Dinglebot away and <laughs> don't do that. Oh, I, I love it. I love it. I'll admit it. I <laughs> just, oh, so good. Oh, I, I did legitimately like laugh out loud. I lolled. I'm not afraid to admit it. I like that scene a lot. And what's sad, it's probably like the most story we're really like ever going to get. Like there's so much potential there to, oh, to lead into like the, what are the motives of this mystery robot girl with boobs? Like what, what are... Why is why does she have all these powers even though she's not a garden? She doesn't have the traveler's light. Oh, where did she come from? Why is she doing what she's doing? I guess that guy now goes into motives. Ah, so many questions and never it's never answered. Spoiler alert. So it ah, it makes me sad because it's just there's so many instances in instances. Sorry, <laughs> I can totally pronounce things in this game where. There's just so much potential for just a great story, and it just never delivers. And it truly makes me sad because that's what really, that's what I really love about games in general is that they're, it's their potential to immerse you with their storytelling. So, um, what am I doing? I already complained in the part 14, so you guys don't need to hear this. Um, anyway, thank you all so much for watching me play. That is going to be it for the day. That was the Vex. In the next video, I'm going to be going a little bit more in depth as to like the lore of them and how they're shown in the Destiny universe. So until then, I will see you in the next one. Bye.